Let us take a look at O Level 2022 Paper 1. We have question 1, y equals to 2x squared minus 8x plus 11, part A, by expressing it in the form, that's the vertex form, so we're going to do completing square. Let's just start with question 1, part A. First step here, we're going to factorize 2 out from the x square and the x value here. So I have a negative 4x. I'm going to leave 11 on its own. So the next step here, when I do complete square, I'm leaving the 2 and 11 out. So I'm going to use a square bracket. Inside here is going to be complete the square form. And I usually do it this way. This will be always a minus. So I write it first and I close this and I place 11 outside. So next step, I'm going to take a look at these negative 4. I divide by 2, that will give me a negative 2 here. And I square this 2, I'll get 4, I fill it up here. So this sign will affect this, and then you square this, this don't change, okay? This is always negative. Next step, let's expand this 2 into this 2. So we have 2 times negative 4, that's a negative 8. Last step here, we have 11 minus 8, that's a plus 3. So we have expressed it in the vertex form. Next, we need to find the coordinate of the stationary point. So therefore, the stationary point would be 2, 3. That's question 1, part A. Now let's take a look at part B, where we have the line y equals 2x plus 3. intersects the curve, which is this curve here, at point A and B. So intersection point, we are going to solve these two simultaneous equations. Let's just place them together. Quadratic equation, move it to one side. So we have minus 8 minus 2, that's a minus 10x. Plus 8 equals to 0. I can divide by 2 here. So divided by 2, by 2 and by 2, and this one divided by 2, that's still 0. Next step, factorizing quadratic So we have x coordinate here as 1 and 4. I need y coordinate, so we can place it this one or this one. Usually I've placed it a shorter one, which I will use this. So we have this one insert to the x position, so we have 2 times 1 plus 3, that's a 5. So I do it again with the 4, 4 place it here. So you will get 2 times 4 plus 3, that's the 11. So from here, you will get 2 points, okay? So one point will be 1, 5, the other point will be 4 and 11, okay? These two points are your points of intersection. So let's do distance between the two points would be a Pythagoras formula. So 4 minus 1 square, and because it's Pythagoras, the center will be a plus, okay? So then we have 11 minus 5 square. This will lead you to the answer of square root 45, okay? So let's read the question again. The distance can be expressed as square root k, and we are asked to find the value of k. So value of k, therefore, must be 45. Okay, so this is question 1, part B. Now let's take a look at question 2 where we have when a substance B is dissolved in an exit, a reaction occurs. The amount of B m grams present at time t minutes after the start of the reaction is believed to be given by the formula m equals to ae power of negative kt where A and K are constant. Measurement of M and T are shown in the table below. Part A, we need to plot ln M against T. So let's do a new table over here for question 2, A. Ln M against T, okay? Or you want to put T first and ln M first, it doesn't matter, okay? So maybe let's just follow the question here. 
and we will put t up here. We have the value of t from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. Let's get the value for ln m. The first value is 15.6. So you're going to type ln 15.6. We'll give you first value here, which is 2.75. Go on to second value, ln of 12.1. That will give you this value here, which is 2.49. The third value, which is ln of 9.5, which will give you 2.25. The fourth value, which is ln 7.4, will give you 2.00. And the last one, which is ln 5.7, will give you 1.74. Okay, this is part A. We are going to plot ln m against t. So we'll be given a graph where you're going to plot ln m against t value. You're going to just plan the graph so that you can insert 1 to 5 over here and insert here. The highest value is 2.75. Just make sure that you plan so that the highest can go up to 3. Okay, this one can go up to 5. So we're going to start 0 here. So let's take a look at the graph of question 2 okay so we have the graph there and after you insert the points over there you're going to extend your graph so that you can cut the y-intercept at the ln m axis okay so that's for part a let's take a look at what's in part b part b use your graph to estimate amount of b present at the start of the reaction so the word start, question B, meaning we're going to get t equals to 0. And if you take a look at the graph just now that we have plotted, okay, the graph there, we have the line passing through this tree, okay, this tree where t is 0. And this tree is actually the ln m value here. So what we're going to do, we're going to write ln m is equals to 3. So we have one task to do, which is to take exponent both sides so that I can get m equals to e3, so which is roughly 20.1 gram. That's part B. Now let's take a look at part C. Use your graph to estimate the time taken to the nearest second where 50% of B has been dissolved. So part C, 50%, which is half or 0 0.5, okay? So for M value, let me write. The starting value is E3, that's the exact one. So now I have 50% means I have half of E3. So if I'm going to use my graph, I can't use this value. I, I don't want to type calculator at this step. I need ln M. So the next step, let's just find what's ln m. So I'm going to take ln of this value here. So I can get roughly 2.31. Okay. So we have the graph over here. We are going to just roughly read where is 2.31. So let me just put somewhere here. And we're going to draw a dotted line to the graph. Then we're going to read the value downwards. This way. So for this one, I'll get roughly 2.75. Okay. So let's just read back this question. For part C, we're going to estimate the time taken here to the nearest second the question in T is in minutes, okay? So what I'll do here is, when I read the time here, the dotted line, I'm reading to 2.75, that's in minutes. Let's do one more step, 2.75 multiplied by 60, that will give you 165 seconds. 
Okay, so just one more step. They're asking for nearest second. So that's our answer for question two, part C. Now let's take a look at question 3a. Divide 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6 by x cubed plus 2x. This one we're going to do long division. There's something you need to be careful for question 3a. This polynomial has arranged in descending order for the power x for you, which is good. So I'm going to write 2x cubed. So notice that the next one is 5x squared, which is still good. And you will notice x term is missing. So what I'll do is, I'm going to insert x term on my own. I'll write a 0x and continue with the last one, which is constant, plus 6. Okay, so divided by x cubed plus 2x here, okay? I want to make sure here has all the terms so that when I align them later, it will be nicely arranged vertically, okay? So it's easier for you to do long division. I need 2x cubed, so I'll have 2 here. 2 times x cubed, I'll get 2x cubed. 2 times 2x, that'll be 4x. I'm going to find the x here, which is here. I'm going to write plus 4x. Next step, I'm going to do minus of this whole expression. So x cubed is gone. So here, bring down by x squared. This is 0 minus 4. That's a negative 4x. 6 minus nothing, that's a plus 6 here. So question 3a, when you divide this polynomial by x cubed plus 2x, the answer, which is this 2 plus the fraction, remainder is this one, right, a numerator. Divisor here, place it at denominator. So that one is question 3a. A, and this one is the answer. Let's take a look at 3b. We need to express this one here in partial fractions. Okay, we have done the long division whereby we have changed this improper fraction into a proper fraction. So next, we're going to just break this proper fraction down to partial fraction. I'm going to focus on this part here. Part b. And before I do that, let's factorize the denominator. Okay, so we have this part here which is x cubed plus 2x, factorize out x plus 2, okay? So I'm going to take this and split into partial fraction. I'll have one distinct factor, I have one quadratic that's irreducible. I'm going to write this way, that's x, the first one. The second fraction will be x squared plus 2. Let's fill up the numerator here. This is x, okay? Linear, distinct factor. We have a on top, which is a constant. This one's irreducible, quadratic. So top here, I'll have a linear, which is bx plus c. Okay? Next step, we're going to multiply by these two. So I left with the numerator on the left. And I, when I multiply these two over here, the x get cancelled. This one get cancelled. I left with here. A with this one. The next fraction, when I multiply with these two, this one get cancelled. So I left with this one here with the numerator. Bx plus c with x. Okay? And if you observe this one, we are going to do substitution of x value because when I substitute x as 0, this part here will be gone, okay? So let x equals to 0. On the left, this one will go to 0. So I left with 6 on the left. And I have a here. 0 plus 2, that's a 2. This part here, I place 0. This whole thing here is gone. So I have this only. That will lead you to a as 3. Okay? There's no more x value that I substitute here. I can't substitute any value here to get rid of this bracket. So what we'll do is, I'm going to replace the a and I'm going to do comparing coefficient. Okay, so next step. 
by comparing coefficient of x square. I'm going to underline this. So how I get x square is going to be this 3x square and it's going to be this bx square. So I know that 3 plus b must be equals to 5. So b must be 2. Okay. Next, since I need to get this c coefficient, that will be coefficient for x. So I will compare coefficients of x square and x. So next one, x will be negative 4. So c must be 94. There's no more x um, term over here. Okay, this will be constant. So this c value is quite easy to get. Okay, so once you have done that, we are going to conclude there. I'm going to use this part here from part A. Okay, so now we're answering part B answer. So this fraction here in full, remember this one have a 2 in front. I'm going to write back this 2. This fraction is this partial fraction here. So it's a over x. So a value 3. Then we have over x. So 3 over x. The next one is 2 here. 2x minus 4 as the numerator. Denominator x squared plus 2. Okay, this is question 3b. Now let's take a look at question 4. We have a curve has equation y equals to 14x minus x squared. Point A and B lie on a curve and have x coordinates of k and 2k respectively, where k is a constant and k is between 0 to 7. Find the range of values of k for which the y coordinate of B is greater than the y coordinate of A. Let's start by inserting the x coordinate into the curve. We have Question 4, part A, y value of the coordinates, the curve is given. So let's find one by one. We have the x coordinate that is k. So first one, I'm going to insert k. So I have this. Second one, I'm going to insert 2k. So this one, I'm going to expand it to this, right? So this is y coordinate for A, this is y coordinate for B. And we are given that y coordinate of B is greater than y coordinate of A. So next step, we are going to do 28k minus 4k square is greater than 14k minus k square. Okay, moving k square to one side, we have negative 3k square plus 14k more than 0. Let me factorize, um, let me just multiply a negative, okay? So let me just multiply a negative. We have 3k square minus 14k. This will be less than 0. I multiply by negative. I need to change the inequality sign over here, okay, at this step. So next step, I'm going to factorize k out. So I have 3k minus 14 less than 0. This inequality in k, let me put the two roots here on x-axis or actually should be k-axis. We have the first answer here is 0. The other answer here is 14 over 3. So I have 0 here and I have 14 over 3 here. So this is a quadratic in k. So I have quadratic. This k, I have changed it to positive 3k squared. So I draw this minimum graph. And I need the value to be less than 0, means below the axis. The answer would be between 0 and 14 over 3. Let's say you want to change to mixed fraction. That's OK too. So your answer should be 4 and 2 over 3. That's question for A. Let's take a look at question 4b. Explain why the gradient of the curve at A is greater than the gradient of the curve at B. I'm going to show you two methods over here for question 4b. First method, gradient of the curve. I'm going to do a dy dx using this one here. It's going to be 14 minus 
2x. Okay, so we're going to find out what's the gradient at a. So dy dx at x equals to um, k value. That's gradient at a, okay? So we have 14 minus 2k. How about at b when x value is 2k? So the answer will be 14 minus 2 times 2k. That will lead you to 14 minus 4k. Okay, so this is gradient of A. This is gradient at point B. Right, now let me just take gradient A minus gradient B, which will have 14 minus 2k minus 14 minus 4k. 14 minus 14 is gone. I have minus 2k, double minus 4k, that's minus 2k plus 4k which is 4k minus 2k, that will give you an answer of 2k. I'm going to argue that this 2k here is positive because of this answer here. Let me just explain. Since, okay, we are given k is between 0 to 4 and over 3, okay? k value here is positive. So this gradient here, Gradient A minus gradient B leads to the positive answer. Therefore, gradient of A is always more than gradient of B. You can write it in a full sentence, okay? Gradient of A is always greater than gradient of B because we have a positive value here, right? That's one way to explain. I'm going to show you a second way of explaining this question for B. We can explain using this graph here. So I'm going to put it all here. Look at this quadratic graph, that's negative x squared. And let's write this quadratic here. And we're going to factorize out x value, so you get 14 minus x, okay? So if you're going to place this quadratic, I'm going to draw the graph. This is the 0 value, this is the 14, and your graph is this way, okay? So the symmetry will be at... 7, okay, so which means if k value fall between 0 and 4 and 2 over 3, so the gradient will be on the left hand side of this graph. So when you explain about the gradient, notice that the gradient, this part is less steep, okay. The beginning part here is steeper. So which means, I'm going to write here, okay, the, the other alternative to explain is by using a graph here. So explanation, as x increases, gradient decreases, okay? You're going to pair with this graph and explain as x increases, gradient decreases for 0 to 7. Or you can explain 0 to 4 and 2 or 3 because a, k, right, falls between that value, okay? So because of this reason, so gradient of A must always be greater than gradient of B, okay? Because A is on the left-hand side of B. That's the reason why. So that's, you can do a differentiation to explain it, or you can base on the quadratic graph, based on the gradient here. We can explain using this line, okay? Let's take a look at question 5, where we have find the first four terms in the expansion of 2 minus AX over 2 power 5 in ascending power of x, which simplifying each term. Let's find out the two keywords first. We have this ascending. Second, we have these first four terms. Okay, I'm going to write part 5a here. Now let's think about what we need to start because of keyword ascending, which means we need to start with x raised to the smallest power. So in this case here, which is x with the power of 0, so we don't start with x, okay? We start with a constant number 2. So our first term should be 2 raised to the power of 5. Then we do not have any x term over here. And the next term here, we're going to start with 5, 1. And we're going to drop these two 
the power from 5 drop to a 4. Next term here, be careful, that's a negative. You write a negative ax over 2 raised to power 1, okay? Next term, 5, 1 change to 5, 2. Drop the power for 2 again to 3 and raise this power to power 2. Next term, 5, 2 become 5, 3. Reduce the power of 2 again to become 2 power 2 and increase this power to power 3. Count first term, second term, third term, fourth term. We are done with four terms, so we don't have to write anymore. So that's the four terms, and we need to simplify it. Now type your calculator, 232. This one here is going to be 5c1 times 2 power 4 times negative half, okay? So you can type 5 times 16 if you can calculate this on your own, and times a negative half. So this one will lead you to a negative 40. Remember to write back the algebra over here where you have a and x, okay? So same thing for this one here, we have 5c2 times 2 power 3 times negative half raised to the power of 2. If you are going to type in calculator, you will get something like this one over there, okay? So we will calculate this part using calculator. Here you will get a value of plus 20. Same thing over here, remember to write back a and x, but these are both raised to power 2. So we will have a square and x square, okay? Same goes to last one, 5c3 times 2 power 2 times negative half raised to power 3. This you will have a negative 5. ax now is raised to power 3, both of them. So we have a power 3 and x power 3 and dot dot dot, okay? That is question 5a. Question 5b, we are given no term in x power 2. That's the keyword. And we have the expansion. So we have extra term over there. Let's just write that down. We'll have 2 plus 3x with this one here. So what we're going to do, this one has no power. So we're going to just write this down. This part here is the answer for part A. Let's write part A answer. Since we are checking term in x squared, let's link. Where can we get x squared? 2, go to link with x squared. x term must link with x term. Okay, so that's how we get x squared term out of these two multiplication. Next, let us grab only the coefficient. Here we have 2. This one here, coefficient is going to be 20a squared over here. 20a squared. Next link, this coefficient is 3. This coefficient, be careful, there's a negative in front here. That's be negative 40a. Since there's no term, meaning the coefficient must be 0. Let's equate to 0 and solve it. So here we have 40a square minus 120a equals to 0. Now if you can see, you can divide by 40. You can go and divide by 40. So we'll reach this one. Try not to divide by algebra A, okay? We'll conclude later. So usually we'll do a factorization of A. Then you'll get A minus 3 equals to 0. I will then conclude that A will be 3. Let's write this A nicely, okay? A will be equals to 3 because A is positive. Let's take a look at the question here. I did not circle this word out. This one, you have the word positive constant A. Okay, so let's conclude that A answer is 3 because we are given that A is positive. If A is 0, there won't be any expansion in question 5. Okay, so that's question 5B. Let me erase the board and we'll discuss question 5C. Let's take a look at question 5C over there. It's the same expansion. So now we are focusing on getting coefficient of x power 3 and we can use the value of a that we have found in the previous question. I'm just writing whatever expansion we get previously here. Now this a value here, we know that is already equal to 3. So we can actually 
you place A with 3 and do another line. So I'm going to write down that line first. So you have this line here, minus 120x. Okay, so remember here is a square, so be careful when you write the expansion. Same goes to this a power 3, now leads you to a negative 135. Now let's link these two to get x power 3. Constant link with x power 3, x will need to lead link with x power 2 to get x power 3. Now let's write down a coefficient that we have here as 2 link with the coefficient here is a negative 135. Next we have the coefficient here is negative 3 link with this coefficient which is 180. Okay so you give us coefficient of x power 3 the answer will be 270. Okay, this is question 5C. Next, we have question 6 where a curve is such that second derivative is given and the curve intersects the y-axis at P which is 0, 5 and has a gradient of 3 at P. Find the equation of curve. So we have second derivative, we're going to work backwards. So that's the integration question. Let me write down the second derivative here. Step 1, this is second derivative, we integrate both sides, so this one will drop to first derivative, dy dx, so I write integration of this expression here. Remember, always write what you want to integrate with, in this case is dx. Next step, let's integrate exponent, so this is pretty simple, it's going to be copy back the same thing. But you got to take note, we have to divide by this coefficient, negative 1. So dividing by negative 1, you can write this way, okay? Or you can just put the negative in front here, okay? Next term here, same thing, I'm going to do the same way. Copy back, divide by coefficient of 2. So if you can see 6 divide 2 here, so what you're going to do is, we can write it as 3e power of 2x. One more thing you need to remember about integration is that you're going to write constant c at the back because we do not have any value here so it's not definite integral we always have a constant unknown that we need to find. That's why you are given um, a set of value there where you can substitute to find constant c. So let's take a look at what we are given. We are given the gradient of 3 here which means this is dy dx and we are given a point where we have x and y. So for the first set to find c, we are going to make use of this dy dx as 3 here. So I'm going to write 3 here. And we're going to substitute x value as 0. So I have here e0. It's also 0. Now let's find value of c. So this one's going to be negative 2 plus 3, shift it over the other side, okay? So now we have c value as 2 here, right? This is 3, this is 3, actually this is gone, okay? This is 3, this is 3, so you purely move negative 2 to become positive 2 on the left. Since we have here, so now I write it again here, we have dy dx value equals to So from first derivative, I integrate this part here, I will get back y, okay? So integrate left, integrate right, so I'm going to write integration sign. So same thing, you're going to write what you are integrating with, in this case it's dx, okay? So next, let's do again integration of exponent. So you have dividing by negative 1, this is coefficient negative 1, so negative, negative get cancelled. So what you can do is, just change this one, change this to positive. Next one here, we have 3e, 2x, 
over to this one. There's nothing you can do. Okay, so we can leave it there. The next one, two integrating two with dx. So you can focus on this one here. So two will get this algebra here x. So we have two x here. Integrating a constant two get two with x value here. And since I have used c over here, we are going to introduce another constant d at the back. Okay. So now I have this equation and I still have unknown d. So we're going to refer to another set of info, which is x value and y value that I'm going to substitute over this line where we have y as 5. So let's sub y as 5 and we're going to sub x as 0 again. So this one going to be 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Okay, so we have d value here. So we're going to move the number. So we have 5 minus 2 minus 3 over 2. So your value of d will be 3 over 2. So now I can conclude the equation of curve is this one here. 2e power negative x plus 3e power 2x over 2 plus 2x here and plus constant d which is 3 over 2. Okay, now let's just take a look at question 7. We're going to read the question and see what we can do about it. We have the diagram shows a circle, center O, with diameter PQ. So I want this information here, diameter PQ, because I know that if I know this is a diameter, I will know this angle will be 90 degree. Let me put it in first. And we have line PT is a tangent to a circle at P. So we know that the P dot here, we have a tangent line PS or PT. Okay, and then we have the point R lies on the circle and the tangent to the circle at R. So we have another tangent here at R here. So we have tangent line of RS where this S is an external point that leads to two tangent. Okay, this is external point. We have two tangent PS and RS, which I will know that this will be equal to this. Okay, so let's read again. We have QRT is a straight line. QRT is a straight line that's obvious in the question. And we have angle RPS equal to S, which is given. Okay, now let's take a look at question part one, where we need to prove angle RST equals to 2S. RST equals 2X, I'm going to put that in. So let's take a look at question one. We have to prove this angle RST equals to 2x here. Okay, so is, if you take a look at whatever information you have placed it in there, okay, it's quite obvious that we are going to use that isosceles triangle. And this angle here is going to be x. And x plus x equals to 2x. So let us see how we will write step by step to lead to the proving of 2x. Because you can obviously see in the diagram, we are going to use information over there, which is the x plus x equals to 2x. But you're going to start from the beginning to tell them what's happening with your reasoning over there. Okay? Because I drew the tangent line just now, so I'm going to write that in as my statement as well. Okay, let's take a look at how we write this question 7 part 1. I'm going to start by writing the tangent line, which is PS equal to RS. Okay, and I'm going to place the explanation behind this one that I will say tangent to the circle from an external point S are uh, equal in length. That's my step one. Okay, so since they are equal in length for PS equal to RS, I can say that triangle PRS is isosceles, okay, which will lead me to angle PRS is equal to angle RPS which is equals to x, okay? Or you can also write this statement first, 
and right here because okay i'm going to shift this one up a bit i'm going to write angle prs equal to angle rps equals to x because we know that triangle rps is isosceles based on this one here okay they have the same length ps equal to rs therefore the angle x and x are equal okay We've already have the information x there. We just have to place and explain that we get this one from tangent and this angle here we get from the isosceles. So now we left with the third step to argue the angle of RSD equals 2x. So let's do that. We have angle of RSD is equal to angle PRS plus angle RPS. Okay. So the reason is because we are using the external angle of a triangle equal to sum of opposite interior angle. Okay, so we're going to write that down. Exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of its opposite interior angles okay so the keyword is this exterior angle to the sum of the opposite interior angles okay so now i can write it as angle x plus angle x so it will lead me to writing 2x then okay so this is proven for part one now let's take a look at question 7 part 2 where we need to prove triangle RSD is isosceles. So now let's take a look at triangle RSD. There's two ways to prove isosceles. You either prove that the length are equal or the base angle are equal. So now we have two x here. Okay. Now let's take a look at if we can find this angle here. So yes we can because we have enough information to write something right. We're going to do angle on the straight line is 180. Let's just work it out first. So I'm going to work it out here. I'm going to write the proper statement over there. So now we have 180 minus 90 minus x. Okay, we're going to do this one as a straight line to find the remaining angle here. So it will lead me to 90 degree minus x. Okay, let me plan here and then I'll write properly in here. Okay, so how about this angle here? This angle here, I'm going to use total angle in the triangle, which is 180. So I can take 180 minus this angle 2x minus another angle that we just found opposite here which is 90 minus x right to find this angle here so now that we have this 180 minus 2x minus 90 plus x notice that i will be finding this angle will be 90 degree minus x which is exactly the same okay so my plan works out. So let me write properly in the explanation over here where we have 7 part 2. Okay, now let's take a look at how we are write the argument here for 7 part 2. We know that we have started finding the first angle which I use angle of the straight line. But do remember that we need to explain about this 90 degree, okay? Where we have drawn it because the question gives us this word here diameter so we're going to start with that angle first okay to explain that angle is 90 degree so seven part two first statement here we're going to write angle q r p equals to 90 degree because that's angle in a semicircle and then we're going to write angle p r t equals to 180 minus angle QRP and minus angle of PRS. So I'm going to write this one is angle on a straight line is 180 degree. Okay, so now let's replace the value of QRP which is 90 this one is x value that will lead us to 90 minus x. This angle PRT. 
And then the next line, we have angle RTS. Okay, so we're going to use 180 minus angle PRT. Oh, I, I write 2x first. Okay, let me just adjust to whatever I wrote there. So I actually minus RST first and minus PRT. This is angles. Okay, I'll write sum of angle in the triangle. Triangle. So in this one, I'm using triangle RST. Is 180 degree. So now I'm going to replace this angle here by 2x, the other one with 90 minus x. Now let's do the calculation again here. So we are leads to 90 minus x. The last step, let us write that these two angles are equal. So angle PRT equals to angle RST. So you will lead to triangle RSD is isosceles. So you want to explain further, there will be base angle of triangle RSD are equal. Okay, so we have proven this part here. So this is the proving for question 7, part 2. Okay, so we just write nicely, remember which statement should come first because this one could be forgotten because you haven't argued that the angle in the semicircle is 90. We are just drawn the 90 in there. But remember to check whether this statement has been written before you start with this one and this one here. Okay. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. We have the diagram shows the curve y equals to 3 square x and the line 4y equals to 3x plus k where k is a constant the line intersects the curve at the points P and Q. Part A, in the case where K equals to 9, this is a good info. Let me just highlight this. We have K equals to 9. I'm going to rewrite this equation as 4Y equal 3X plus 9. And since we have this one, we need to find coordinates of P and Q. That's the point of intersection. We're going to do simultaneous. So we're going to replace the Y over here. Okay, let us take a look at question part A. A. We have 4 and I'm going to replace y as 3 square root x equals to 3x plus 9. Now, if you can see, you can divide 3 here. You can do that. So, I'm going to just do one more step for you to see. Look at this. This is multiple of 3, multiple of 3, multiple of 3. So, you can rewrite it as 4 square root x equals to x plus 3. Okay, so next step, we're going to square both sides. You can do this if you can't see it. So, you can just place a square left and right. Now, we're going to square 4. That's a 16. Square root and square, you get x back. Now, let's square this. We have x square plus double of the center. So, we have 6x. Square root of 3, you have 9. a square plus 2ab plus b square. So we have a quadratic. Now let's just solve it to 0. We have x squared. Moved it over. So 6 minus 16. That's a minus 10x plus 9. Next step. Factorizing quadratic. So we have x minus 1. x minus 9. That will give you a minus 10x in the middle. So we have x value as 1. x value as 9. We need coordinates. So coordinates meaning you have to write x comma y coordinates. We have y as 3 square root x, so we're going to use that. y equals to 3 square root x, so the first one is 1, so I get 3 here. The second one will be 3 square root x, which is a 9. So we have 3 times 3, have a 9 here. So the two coordinate, one will be 1 comma 3, and the other one will be 9 comma 9. So if you look at P and Q in the diagram. So this one will be coordinate P. This one will be coordinate Q. Okay, so we have 1, 3 and 9, 9 for P and Q coordinate. That's for question 8, part A. 
Now let's see question 8 part B in the case where the line is a tangent. So this one is an entire new question that we need to find value of k when the line is a tangent. So the line will probably look something like this, touching the curve at one point. Okay, so that's a two chapter that you can think of. One chapter is discriminant equals to zero. The other one, tangent, means they're sharing the same gradient. Okay, so let me just use one of the method. We are having this two line. Okay, so same thing, but I can't use the one with uh, the case substituted, but I'm going to use the original one, and I'm still going to do a substitution of the y position into here. Now, let's take a look at it B here. We have 4 times 3 square root x still, but now we have 3x plus k, where k you cannot use 9, so we're going to use the original k. And now we have 12 square x equals to 3x plus k. So this one, we don't have a multiple of 3. So we're going to square both sides here at this step. Next, you're going to have this 12 square as 144. This one, you have x. So now let's square 3 and also x. Center will be double of this. So we have 6kx. This is 3kx, so double it. Next one, we have squaring of the last term here. We have k squared, okay? So you get a quadratic. Let's arrange one side to zero. We have 9x squared plus 6kx. I'm going to put the x together. So I have minus 144x here and plus k squared. So that is easier for you to grab a as 9 from here. Coefficient, that's 6k minus 144 and this will be k squared as a constant. I'm going to use discriminant. That's the tangent which is touching on one point. We're going to use discriminant equals to zero. So discriminant is going to be b squared. So 6k minus 144 squared minus 4ac. There's a 9 here. And there's a k squared here. Okay. Equals to zero. Now let's expand this. So you have 36 square root of 6 and k. Next, you can use a calculator. 6 times negative 144 times 2. That will give you a negative 1728k. Squaring of 144, that will be 20736. Okay, so that will be 9 times 4 here. That's a negative. So we have 36 here and then we have k squared equals to zero okay now let's take a look at this one here this is k squared 36 both are 36 k squared and then you minus so it's gone so now i left with 20736 i'm going to move this one to the right and next step k value will be 20736 divided by 1728 that will give you k equals to 12 so that's question 8 Part B, okay? Question 9, we have the equation of a curve is y equals to x power 3 minus ax squared plus bx plus 4, where a and b are constants. Part A, show that if y is always increasing, then a squared is less than 3b. Now, let's focus on this information here. y is always increasing. So this one gives us an idea that we need to start doing with dy dx more than zero, okay? When a graph is always increasing, the gradient is positive. So that's question nine, part A. Let's start with 9a dy dx equals two. So we have x power three there. We're gonna differentiate to three x squared. And then we have minus ax power 2, that will differentiate to minus 2ax. The next one is bx, so differentiation, we have plus b. So this is our answer for dy dx, and we are doing dy dx more than 0. Okay, so when y is increasing, when dy dx is more than 0, so we have this quadratic 3x squared minus 2ax plus b is more than 0. Okay, so I'm going to draw a tiny one here. 
this is a quadratic more than zero, it looks something like this. Remember this, you have two conditions that you need to think of. One is the shape of the graph where a more than zero. Another one is where it does not touch the x-axis here. So we have discriminant less than zero, okay? Two cases here. So I'm going to write both. I'm going to write properly instead of a more than zero. So take a look at this coefficient is positive, right? So this is already fulfilled, but I'm just going to write it. So we have coefficient of x squared is already more than zero in this case here. So next step, I'm going to do discriminant less than zero. So I'm going to grab discriminant in this case. I'm going to write discriminant first. Less than zero. Let me just take this one out here. The coefficient of x is minus 2a. So we have minus 2a squared minus 4. a is 3 here. c is the b here. Okay, less than zero. So discriminant part. This is b, this is a, this is c. Okay, so now let's do this one here. We square this, we'll have 4a squared minus 12b less than zero. We need to prove a squared less than 3b. Let's just move this one over there. We have 12b on the right. Next step, we're going to divide by 4. So we have shown this part that where y is increasing, this will be a squared minus, sorry, a squared less than 3b. Okay, that's question 9, part A. Question 9, part B, in the case where a equals to 8 and b equals to 10, so we have this one here, we're going to plug into this curve and rewrite it again. We have question 9, part B. We know that y, by replacing a and b, we'll have x cubed minus 8x squared plus 10x plus 4. Using the value of a and b, find the x coordinate of the three points at which the curve intersects the x-axis. So we know that we are solving y to 0. So I'm going to write one more line. Okay, to intersect x-axis, we're going to solve y equals 0. So we have things like that. x cubed minus 8x squared plus 10x plus 4 equals to 0. I just replace a 0 on the right-hand side, okay? So we have a cubic equals to 0. So it's polynomial chapter. So we need to find the first root by trial and error. You can click calculator uh, from there. You will know that the first nice root, I'm going to let x is equal to 2. And I'm going to show them when I put 2 in, we will get 0. Okay, so I know that x minus 2 is a factor. Okay, so once I know that, I'm going to factorize x minus 2. So this is a power tree. Let me show you here. This is a power tree line. I factorize a linear factor out. So power tree break to power 1 with a power 2. So I'm going to write power 2. I'm going to use capital letter AX squared plus BX plus C equals to 0. We're going to figure out what's ABC. For A and C, by I, you can actually see. So let us just take a look at the first one here. I need to get X power 3. So this one needs to be 1 so I can get X power 3 directly. So that will be an X square, right? X times X square. That's the X power 3. Let's check this one here. We have a positive 4. So negative 2 need to multiply by negative 2 to get a positive 4. Now let's take a look. Negative 2 times negative 2. That's a positive 4. So I get this one here. Center, I'm going to write back as bx. Okay? You have two terms here to check. You either check x square or x. Let me just check x square here. I'm going to double underline. Let's link to x square. So this one will give you x square. And this one will give you x square. If you can't see, you can write the side. That will be a minus x square, minus 2x square, and also a bx square. But if you can see, let's just grab the coefficient. We have b minus 2 as coefficient, and the coefficient up here is negative 8. Okay? Let's equate. So we will solve b value will be negative 8 plus 2, or 2 minus 8, that will be a negative 6. Okay? So let me bring down this line here. 
replacing b value, we have x squared minus 6x minus 2 equals to 0. All right? So here, you solving linear equals 0, that will be x equals to 2 for this one here. But this one here, quadratic, and we look at this, this one you can't factorize. So solving, either you do complete square, I'll just do a formula, negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So from this one here, you will get two answer. There will be 6.32 and another one negative 0 0.317. Okay, so here you have three answers that will fulfill the three points that it asks you to find. Okay, question 10, we have trigograph. 10 part A, find the amplitude and period of number 1, 2 sine x. So we have amplitude equals to this one here, which is 2. Next, we need to write down period. Period for sine, we're going to use 2 pi or 360. But if you're peeping into question B here, you are asked to draw in radian. Okay, so let me just put this answer for period in terms of 2 pi, if you want to do calculation, this one is coefficient 1, is already divided by 1. This answer will still be 2 pi here. Then number 2, we have 3 minus 4 cos 2x, this amplitude equals, amplitude is a number that is right in front of trigo. This one is 4. Now ignoring this negative, this negative will give you the shape of the graph. So we're just going to write down amplitude as 4 and period. So period for sine and cos, we use the same thing, which is 2 pi divided by coefficient of x here, which is 2. So this period, I will get a pi instead, okay? So question 10, A1 and A2 is amplitude and period. That will actually be very helpful because part B, we need to sketch on the same diagram, okay? We need to sketch on the same diagram of these two graphs here. Let me just put a tiny shape beside this one and this one. This one is positive sign, so you will get one S shape in 2 pi. This one, this negative of cos, so you gotta remember, negative of cos, I do a one tiny shape, it will look like this way here. So this graph will happen in pi, okay, will happen in pi. So now that we know that what's the period and what is the planning of the graph, next I need to plan my y-axis. X-axis planning is ready in the question here. This is your x-axis. I need to draw from 0 to 2 pi. How about y-axis? So let me just put my planning down here, part B, where I need to sketch, okay? So I plan maximum of my first graph. That is, okay, it's based on x-axis, so the maximum will be 2. And the minimum will be negative 2 for this graph here, okay? How about my second graph? Second graph, maximum is going to be, this one is the middle of the graph, so 3. This one is the amplitude, okay? So 3 plus 4 will give me a 7. The minimum of the graph is going to be middle going down by 4. So 3 minus 4, I'll get a negative 1, okay? I want to see how high and how low I need to draw the graph. So look at this, the highest point I have 7, this is the highest. The lowest point I need to draw is until negative 2. So now I can draw this graph here. I need a maximum goes to 7, so I have uh, roughly. So this is a 0, okay. So let me draw a minimum of negative 2, so I can have negative 1. Here, negative 2, so I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, Five can move a bit up so it looks more equal. Six and seven. Okay, so this is y axis. It's gonna be x axis. Okay, we will draw one by one. So let me just draw the first one first. I need to draw this graph two sine x, maximum minimum is two to negative two. The graph is the middle is on the x axis here. 
So we are going to draw until 2 pi. Now let's split this to pi and 2 pi. And I split half again. Okay, so I'm going to just draw a guided point here for me. So this one will go like this. That's a three guidance point. And I have here as maximum. And I have somewhere here as minimum. Okay, so now let's sketch the sine graph. So I have this graph here. It's a 2 sine x, maximum, minimum with the middle at 0, which is the x-axis. I'm done with sine graph. Let's just take a look at this cos graph here. So this planning, so this is a pi, this is a 2 pi. So that's you're drawing one shape here of this shape in 2 pi. Now I'm going to draw this shape in pi, okay? Let's plan this one here. And you need to plan so that the center will be at 3. So let me draw a 3 here. So this will be a center of the graph. And the maximum and the minimum will go from negative 1 to 7. So this one starts with the minimum, which is the negative 1, which is this point here. Okay? And I need to end at pi, which is roughly here. And it goes to the maximum. So this center here goes to maximum somewhere here. So if I want to draw center, is between these two points. It will be ending at 3 here. So somewhere here as well. Okay? So center and this is center. Right? Now let's draw... Okay, we have something like this. So let's draw again. We have this graph, the center here, move to the maximum, which is 7. So the minimum will be a negative 1. So the center of the center, which is this round here, around here, and this one around here. So then you will get something like this. Okay, so this is a graph for 3 minus 4 cos. 2x, where the middle is y equals to 3, and this amplitude upwards of 3 plus 4 gets 7, 3 minus 4, you get negative 1, okay? And we're going to draw pi, that's when this uh, graph here will happen, in pi, that's the period, okay? Next, we have question 11. The triangle ABC is such that A is 4, 2, B is 10, 2, and C is BQ, where Q is more than 0. The area of the triangle ABC is 15 units square and AC equals to square root of 89. Part A, explain why Q equals to 7. Now this question here, you notice that you have triangle, but do not fall too quickly into applying the triangle formula that you always use. Let's just roughly put a point in the diagram and you will see something that will make this question very easy. Let's take a look at question 11. If you're going to place the position of the point where we have 4, 2, let's say it's roughly over here. It's 4, this is 2, that's coordinate A. And you have somewhere that is like 10 here. So you have A point and B point here. You will notice that they are actually parallel to axis. You know that the base of the triangle, so this is part A, base of triangle is actually from A to B. From the diagram, you can do a 10 minus 4 equals to 6. Okay, then it will lead you to using half times base 6 times height. You will get the area of the triangle which is 15. Then let's just calculate H by doing 15 times 2, 30 divided by 6. That will give you a height of 5 unit. Okay, so that's the base of 6 unit and height of 5 unit will give you an area of triangle that is a 15 unit square. So let's say we know that 5 unit is the height of triangle and they told you that this Q, this Q point here, where it is more than 0, so we know that C is somewhere above. Okay, instead of below, it's above. That's a Y coordinate of uh, C. Alright, so we know H is... 5, where the height is 5, so it means that from the base, this height here is 5, and we know that this B and A, they start from 2 here, right? So we can know that Q will be 2 plus 5, that will give you a 7, okay? So C will fall somewhere along this line, that when the Y coordinate is 7, okay? C will be somewhere along this line. Now we have done part A. Now let's take a look at part B where we need to find possible values of P. 
So now I'm just randomly sketch a C coordinate here, which is P comma Q. We already know this Q is 7. Let's just erase this and place it at 7. We, are, we have another information. Okay, if you keep doing the 15 triangle, uh, sorry, 15 as the area, you won't be able to locate this point P. So now let's take a look at another information there where they give you the length of AC is square root of 89. Now we can do length of AC. So A is 4, 2 here. Let me just place a 4, 2 here. Okay, with this point here, we can do a distance formula for AC, which is equal to square root of 89. So let's make it of the two coordinate. okay? So we have square root P minus 4 square. This is X coordinate, X coordinate, this Y. So it's a Pythagoras formula, the center is a plus. We have 7 minus 2 square will be equal to square root of 89. Okay, now let's square both sides to take away the square root. And I'm going to square, uh, I'm just going to leave this one here, okay? So because P only happens over here, I'm going to leave it here. And I'm going to do this one, this is 5 squared, that's a 25, equals to 89, okay? The reason is because I don't want to expand this, later it will be easier for us to do. So next step, P minus 4 squared, you have 89 minus 25, that will give you a 64. So P minus 4, you have plus minus 8, because square root is 64 is 8 and we know that inside here we have two answers, we have plus minus 8. So now let's split to two solutions. P minus 4, it could be a positive 8. So P then will be a 8 plus 4, that's a 12. And I'll do it again. P minus 4 equals to negative 8. P would be minus 8 plus 4 or 4 minus 8, that will be a negative 4. Now let's take a look. If you place this one here, it will make sense to you that where's the C coordinate? It's somewhere that is at negative 4 and the 12. So negative 4 will be somewhere here. This one of your C coordinate that will be here. The other C coordinate will be maybe somewhere here. Okay, that will be your 12 comma 7. Okay, so let us just erase this one to let you see. Okay, if you erase this one here, you'll notice that A, it could have two equal distance that's here that could be equal to this distance here. So you have two possible answers for um, P value, which if you read the question, they already give you a hint, possible values of P. Because there will be two possible positions that the length of AC will be equal, okay? So that's the two answers for P value for question 11. Question 12, we have a diagram given to us. The diagram shows a computer screen, 120 cm wide. A dot oscillates in a straight line on the screen between the two points A and B on the edge of the screen. AB is parallel to the base of the screen and the displacement of the dot from O, the center of AB is modelled by the equation x equals to A sine nt, where t is the time in seconds after passing through O and A and N are constants. The time for one oscillation is 6 seconds. Let us just grab the important information. We have this x equals to a sine and t. And we have one oscillation. That means one period that's given to us as 6 seconds. Okay? So you notice that the, the movement of point is from a to b, which is this here, 120. And this is the middle of the graph. Okay? So now let's explain why a equals to 60. If you observe a here, is the amplitude of the trigger graph. So let us just answer question 12a. Okay, so a value here is going to be the whole thing there, 120 divided by 2, okay? Because O is the center, so amplitude is half of that. So we'll get this as 60. So we have uh, explained why equals, a equals to 60. Next, let us take a look at n value there, okay? So we're going to take a look at the period of sine graph. So period of sine graph is going to be 2 pi divided by coefficient of t there, which is n value. Let's just divide by n. We equal to the period given to us, which is 6 seconds here, okay? 6. So I'm going to swap n and 6 over here. Okay, swap these two positions. So n is equal to 2 pi over 6. So n value is going to be 1 over 3 pi, right? So we have proof 
that a equals to 60 and n equals to 1 over 3 pi for part a. Next, we obtain an expression for velocity. So this one is displacement is given. So let us just replace the value and write it again. For x, we will have a as 60, so 60. And we have sine nt, which is this one here, 1 over 3 pi t. We need velocity. So we know velocity is to differentiate displacement x, dx dt. Okay? So differentiation, this is sine. So we write back the same thing, change sine to cos differentiation of trigo. We'll get back the same. Okay, for differentiation of sine, we get back cos with the same thing, 60 and 60, positive and positive. Next, we need to differentiate inside here, which is this 1 over 3 pi t. You differentiate, you'll get 1 over 3 pi. So I'm going to write it back here, 1 over 3 pi. Let us simplify this, 60 divided 3, that's a 20 pi cos 1 over 3 pi t. That's the velocity. And next, we have obtained the expression. Next, we need to deduce maximum speed. Now, let me just tell you two things here. Maximum speed, you can do with two methods. One method, you're going to observe the graph of the speed, or in this case, velocity, okay, graph of velocity. You can also use dv dt equals to zero. Whenever we have a trigger graph, we want to avoid doing dv dt equals zero because that's quite long, because we, we actually know how um, the cost graph behave. So we have a cost graph here. This is the amplitude of the graph, okay? So the highest it can go is 20 pi. So we are just going to write that we have maximum speed. That's going to be 20 pi. That's a higher position of graph. And if you type calculator here, you'll get roughly 62.8 cm per second. Okay? That's what you will get for maximum speed. Now let's take a look at part C here. We have acceleration. Find the magnitude of acceleration. So let's do a acceleration over here. Square to d v d t. Differentiating velocity. That's the cos here. So when you differentiate cos, you're gonna take the opposite sign, which we have negative twenty pi. Change cos to sine. And next, we have also differentiating this part here. We have 1 over 3 pi. That will lead you to acceleration answer, negative 20 over 3. Pi times pi, that's a pi square. Sine 1 over 3 pi t, okay? So acceleration at where? Acceleration at A. Now let's discuss what's the time when it's at A. So if you read the question here, they say that... Um, the time, let me just take another color here, after passing O, okay? So your starting point will be at O. Let us just take this here, this 60 sine 103 pi t, okay? I'm going to draw a displacement over here for you to see. So this is a sine graph, and you know that the period given to you above, that's from here to here, that's a 6 second. So your oscillation start when you're at O, and this maximum means you have gone to A, this point here, and this point here where you have gone to point B, okay? So you oscillate between A and B like this. So when you are at A, what is this time over here? This one is B, a quarter of this 6, correct? So this time is going to be 6 divided by 4. That will give you a 1.5, okay? So the time at A is 1.5. Let us just place this in here. In this calculation, we have sine of 1 over 3 pi multiplied by 1.5. So from here, you will get an answer of negative 65.8. So we are going to write the magnitude. So based on this question, we need the magnitude of the acceleration. So magnitude is going to be 65.8 cm per second square for acceleration at point A. That's for question number 12. Next, we have question 13, which is the last question of this paper. The diagram shows part of the curve y equals to 4x plus 2 divided by x plus 1, where x is more than negative 1. 
explain why the curve does not have a stationary point. Let's focus on this word here, stationary point. We all know that at stationary point is when dy dx equals to zero. Okay, so let's just find dy dx first. We have question 13, part A, dy dx equals to. So we have an expression there. We're going to use quotient rule for differentiation. I'm going to use differentiating one at a time. I'm going to differentiate the top there first. We have 4x plus 2. That will differentiate it to a 4, okay? And I'm going to copy down x plus 1. Next, quotient rule center is a minus. Now I'm going to differentiate the bottom, which is denominator. We have x plus 1. That will differentiate it to a 1. And I'm going to multiply the top one, which is 4x plus 2, okay? So I'm not going to memorize any formula. It's just differentiate one at a time. And you're going to differentiate whatever comes first, which is the top one, okay? So differentiate, copy, differentiate, copy. And the bottom here, we have x plus 1 squared. Okay? Let's simplify this expression here. We have 4x plus 4, expand. And we have 4x minus expand in. We have minus 4x minus 2. We have x plus 1 squared here, which I'm not going to expand the denominator. So now let's take a look at numerator. 4x minus 4x is gone. We are left with 4 minus 2, which is a 2 over x plus 1 squared. Okay, so you notice that this and this is gone. Okay, so now let's uh, try to solve when dy dx equals to 0. So what will happen? You are solving this expression to 0. So you will notice there is no solution. Okay, so which means you multiply this here, you get 2 equals to 0, which is like no solution for x. So then we will write down since dy dx cannot be 0, therefore uh, the curve does not have a stationary point. Does not have a stationary point. Okay? Next, let's take a look at question B. We have the point P lies on a curve and the gradient of the curve at P is half, okay? So gradient is half, meaning we're going to apply dy dx equals to half and this is happening at point P, which means then we can find point P from there, okay? And let's just finish reading the question. We have the normal to the curve at P meets the x-axis at A and y-axis at B. If you look at the picture, so normal means if I'm going to draw a tangent line here at P, this one is going to be at 90 degree, okay? Right? So we have question B here. Since we know dy dx is this value here, we're going to take this value 2 over x plus 1 squared equals to half, okay? We are doing gradient at P, okay? So we equate dy dx uh, to the gradient half that's given to us. Let's solve this one. So divide by 2, I'm going to multiply to the left, so I get a 4 here. So I take 1, multiply by this, which I have an x plus 1 square here. Okay, so I'm going to square root this, I'll have two answer. So we have x plus 1 here, so I don't have to write a bracket anymore. Square root. Okay, so I'm going to split this solution here. We have x plus 1 equal positive 2, x plus 1 equal negative 2. So here I'll have 1 as my answer and here I have negative 3 as my answer. And if you remember the question here has given you something like this. You need to pay attention. Let me just tie it up. So more than negative 1, I'm going to reject this answer here. Anyway, if you look at the picture, the p-value there is a positive 1 here, okay? So we have the x-coordinate. Let's find the y-coordinate of p by inserting this 1 into the curve, okay? P is on this curve here. So we can replace x value as 1 to find the y coordinate of P. We have 4 times 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 1. Okay, so you will be getting a 3 here, right? 6 divided by 2. So now let me write down P coordinate will be 1 comma 3. We need to find AB point, 
okay, before we can find area of triangle AOB, and AB lies on the normal line, okay? So once we have P point here, we have gradient of tangent which is half. Let me just write down gradient of normal. Gradient of normal is going to be taking a different sign, so it's positive, I put a negative, and take a reciprocal of half, that's going to be a negative 2, okay? So this gradient of tangent, this gradient of normal. So from these two information, we can form a straight line equation. So from here, we are going to, uh, I'm going to just point here, okay, we continue here. Y minus Y coordinate, which is 3, equals to gradient, negative 2. Then we have X minus X coordinate, which is 1, okay? Forming the line of AB, okay, which is the normal line. Now let's just expand this and simplify this. We have negative 2x, negative times negative, that's a positive 2. So y equals to negative 2x, 2 plus 3, that's a plus 5 here, okay? So from here, if you take a look, this is a y-intercept. So y-intercept is the b here, so we already know this is 0, comma 5, okay? So let's just write it down here as well. So we have b, that is 0, comma 5. To find a value, a value is where... The y coordinate here is 0, okay? So let's place y as 0 here. Let's find what is a. So here we have a 2.5. So a coordinate is going to be 2.5 comma 0. So there's a 2.5 here. So you notice the triangle OAB is actually a right angle triangle here. We can just make use of half times base times height. So Area of triangle AOB is going to be half times base, which is 2.5. The height will be 5. That will give you an answer of 6.25 unit square. Okay, so that's for question B, for question 13. Let me erase here and then we will discuss 13 part C. Thirteen part C, the line y equals to c does not intersect the curve by expressing 4x plus 2 over x plus 1 in the form of a plus b over x plus 1, where a, b, c are constant. Explain why c more than or equals to 4. Let's just do the first step first. We're going to express this fraction into another expression. So take note that this fraction here is improper fraction because the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are equal. Okay, so it's improper. And they ask you to express into this expression here, which is a proper fraction. So we are going to do long division, okay? We're going to express an improper fraction into a proper fraction. So step one for 13c, we're going to do 4x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. So how to get 4x here? I'm going to write 4. 4 times x, that's a 4x. And 4 times 1, that's a plus 4 here. Okay, remainder, 2 minus 4. Or you can put a minus out here if you like. If not, you can just minus like this. If not, it's like this. So that will get a negative 2 here. So when I write this expression, 4x plus 2 divided by x plus 1, my answer will be this quotient here, 4, okay? So this numerator here will be negative 2. I place a negative in the middle. So over this x plus 1, the divisor. All right, so that's my answer by expressing this curve into this expression. So this pattern here will give you this standalone number 4. So to explain why the line does not intersect, I'm going to say that y equals to 4 is the asymptote. of the curve, okay? When it's asymptote, then you won't have graph at y equals 4. Let's take a look at how we can know the graph actually lies above or below this asymptote, okay, by doing some testing. So since we want to test something that's more than negative 1, so I'm going to test what is the value that's more than negative 1, 0. That would be a good testing point. If I let x equals to 0, I'm going to test this y value, okay? You can test here or here, doesn't matter, okay? Let me just maybe pass over this one here, okay? 
So if we have 4 times 0 plus 2 divided by 0 plus 1, that gives you a 2, okay? So 2 is always below this 4, okay? So therefore, we actually know that y equals to 4x plus 2 over x plus 1 always lie below the line y equals to 4. And therefore, we know that uh, c okay, is always more than equals to 4, okay? So the graph always lie below this line. So when your line is more than or equals to 4, it will not cut the curve. All right, so we need to explain that it always lie below because here they have this one here. Okay, instead of just y equal four, they ask you why c is always more than equal to four. So you must have must have this one here lie below. All right, so you know that wherever there's above line number four, y equal five, y equal six, y equal seven, you will never cut a curve. Let me just show you how the graph looks like. Okay, but you don't need to know how the graph looks like. So the graph actually looks something like this, okay? You have the curve there. And the y equals to 4, that's the horizontal line over there that you won't have any intersection. So we're talking about x more than negative 1. Let me just plot also x equal negative 1. So we're talking about the right-hand side of the graph. So you see the black color graph is always below the red line, which is y equals 4, okay? So you need to know lie below. You can do a testing. You will know this 2 is always below the 4, okay? Because when you have asymptote number 4, the graph either lies above or below. You have only two choices, right? So that's for question number 13.